route clicking between different VRFs. This configuration describes route clicking between different VRFs. A direct diagram. Um, I have this diagram as well in ENS3 here. Almost the same diagram actually. So it says here that uh, you cannot configure two static routes to advertise each prefix between the VRFs because this method is not supported. Uh, packets will not be routed by the router. To can achieve route linking between VRFs, you must use the import functionality of route target and enable BGP on the router. No BGP neighbor is required. So yeah, I just basically, you know, uh, configured the IP addressing on uh, the interfaces on these routers. And I think the only difference is I have loopback interface here on C3 that has that IP address. And uh, loopback interface as well on C4 that has this IP address. Yeah, so and this is how you. Uh, this is the configuration uh, on the P P4, and I will configure P4 based on this configuration. And this is how you. Uh, verify the prefixes that are learned via BGP. So here. So we have a note here that says the other way of leaking route between VRFs is to connect together two e Ethernet interfaces on the P4 router and associate each Ethernet interfaces with one of the uh, of the VRFs. You must also, or you also must configure static RF entries in the VRF tables for the respective next hop uh, addresses. However, this is not a recommended solution for route leaking between VRFs. The previously described BGP technique is the recommendation, recommended solution. So we will not uh, look into this actually. Uh, we will just <coughs> Uh, configure uh, route leaking between different VRFs uh, using uh, BGP or actually uh, multi protocol BGP in this case. Doesn't say here, just uh, says BGP, but uh, I think that's understandable. Okay, so I will start with configuring the I mean, I will <coughs> configure uh, P4 now. So, like I said, the interfaces have already been configured. So, I will just go into global configuration mode and get this cut and paste this. And again, this is the this is the diagram. So, on this side here. Uh, VRF is, I mean, I'm configuring VPN1 as the VRF and here VPN2 on this side. So let us let me configure this part first. So I will, so yeah, copy and paste. And this is how you configure the interface to belong to that um, VRF. Yeah, so uh, it says here that uh, once you have enabled, v enabled VRF, the IP address will be uh, removed. So I have to configure the IP address again. And the next step is basically I will go under VPN, VRF VPN and then 
configure this. This is route distinguisher. So RD, yeah, RD specify route distinguisher. And I'm using this. This is basically what we have in that same document here. So I will configure that. And then I will use route target, I mean configure route target and export this. Export this uh, route distinguisher value. Yeah. So, and for VPN2, I will use this route distinguisher, so that's why I. I importing this this value okay uh, that would be for VPN I will go ahead and configure this as well because uh, we static VRF route because like it's like I said I have uh, So from VPN one, <clears throat> I need to have connection to this loopback address. So that's why I'm, configure I'm configuring this static route, pointing to this next top IP address. And okay, I will configure B BRF VPN two. I will just copy and paste these commands. And do the static VPN route. I mean VR route as well. <coughs> and then configure multi-protocol BGP router ID and actually just and you can figure router ID let's see I think it will really still work with our router ID but we'll try to configure it It's not right already. It's not here. That's fine. I will not configure it because uh, I already tried this and it worked. So without configuring configuring route or ID. Yeah, that would be. And that is all for the configuration on P4. So this is. I will use that command to verify the all the PRF configurations. And yeah, it's looking good. Yeah. So on C three and C four, I only have um, here. I already verified it. I have a default route pointing to uh, P four. Um, both. Uh, CU3 and C4. So now I will go back to E4 and if I do that, so this is the global routing table. I, I don't see anything here. But if I do this command DRF VPN1, so here I see that I'm learning these routes. This would be, yeah, this is VPN1. So from VPN1, I see this this route from VPN2. So uh, route leaking is working between VRFs. And I also see this route, which is 
this the back uh, IP address. Right? This the back interface. And I'm learning it uh, via BDP as well. And <clears throat> you can see that here VPN2. This one here is directly connected, so it doesn't say it doesn't say that. And I will do that. I will check uh, the routes for or from VPN2. So from VPN2, I see this directly connected routes, which is this, and the loopback address, which is this, and it says this. We have this keyword again, and this is the other commands that we can use. Add that command so we just use here. So this will sh this should show us all the routes for both PRS. Yeah. And this is another command just to specify which PRF you are going to look at. VPN1, this here, VPN2, and from CE3 I can actually ping, from CE3 I can ping this loopback address sourcing from uh, CE loopback address, which is this, and use this command, yeah, it works, and I will do the same on CE4. Which should also work. Yeah. And one thing that I will try as well is let me show you this. So show IP BDP. Uh, so when you use this command, it says according to iOS, at least uh, to this iOS that I'm using, this is. How you specify you should specify you should use this if you are using address family right option so that's why this is what I'm using and to display all VRF or VPN information I can say uh, all yeah there is another command which is this here um, ERF name so I can actually you know what it's fine without specifying that I can just say this VPN or VRF yeah so these are the VRFs that we have on this router and we see the default ID. These are the interfaces uh, under each VRF. I mean VRF. Yeah. So yeah, I will try this. So VRF VPN one. And I will ping, let's say, 10, 0, 2, dot 2. That should work. <coughs> and from VPN2, from VPN2, let me see if I can actually. Oh, it works as well. Ah, yeah, because of because we can see both routes from from both VPNs. I mean VRF, so that should work. VPN VPN one, VPN two. 
yeah let me see if I can do the same for VPN 1 I mean <clears throat> this route here for for both VRFs so 10.1.2.6 yeah it works and VPN 2 it works so looks like it's working uh, as expected and let me just do this command again yeah <clears throat> it's working because like I said uh, asking us for still asking to configure a router ID but uh, it's still working right um, I will check this offline uh, not really something that we have to do in this video yeah so let me check again here VPN 1 I see on VPN 1 I see this route and this route this route and this route and this route and uh, yeah same <coughs> same routes for both um, VRFs, so it's working as expected.